I was born in the home out on Little Elm Road. That is where I live now. My father was Maynard Anthony Dorman. My mother was Rosalie Eugene Dorman. I had an older sister, Eugenia. She was 13 when I was born, and Martello was 10 when I was born. We lived on a farm. We lived, we had 80 acres out there. My father purchased 80 acres, and it was a fruit farm. We had apples, grapes, strawberries, plums, cherries, you name it. We had all of it, and that was the main thing that we did. Then he later worked for an insurance company. We did both things. I'm sure that when I was born, they were hoping for a boy to help father with the farming. I turned out to be his boy. I worked in the fields, in the strawberries. I put the crates together. I put the handles in the grape baskets. I drove the team of mules. I did it all as a boy would do and loved every minute of it. Well, I was about eight, I think, when I first started doing that. And I did that when Dad would be cultivating row crops so that I could keep the mules off of the crops and he wouldn't have to worry about that. And I, I loved it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. The mules' names were Jude and Beck. And then later in the grape vineyard, I was in charge of the wagon and the mules. And uh, I picked up the grapes and tallied them and would go from row to row with the team of mules, back them up, go forward, whatever I had to do. But they obeyed me, <laughs> and I loved every minute of it. Well, you got tired, but I didn't think of it as hard work. It was just something you, had, you were, were going to do. You had to do to survive. That was how you made your living. When it rained a lot, the road would be got very, very muddy and the car couldn't drive through and dad would have to bring the team of mules to pull us through areas on that little elm road. The car just couldn't make it be so muddy. So the team of mules came in very handy many, many times that way. And when they would get out of the pasture it happened to be on Sunday morning, and someone would call Dad to tell him that our mules were at their place. And he said, well, can you fence them in? Because most generally we were ready to come into Sunday school. And sometimes they could, and sometimes they couldn't. They were just out on the road. So if they couldn't fence them to keep them till after church, Dad and I went after the mules, we'd bring them home. Then we would come on in for Sunday school and church. But that was the day of the week they got out was on Sunday. We came to Prairie Grove to school. This was before consolidation. And Eugenia and Martello, Dad had an old touring car. And there were several students from the neighborhood that rode. That was the school bus from our area. So I was able to come to Prairie Grove for the first two years. Then the old car died, and Father did not have the money to repair it. Then I went to Bethel Grove through the 8th. Then there was no, uh, they didn't have buses, and this was before consolidation. So the first year, I drove the pickup back into Prairie Grove. I was 14. And, I, and then the next year they had a bus system. In the 10th grade I rode the bus. Well, the pictures that we looked at, that was, that was the building that I was in in high school. The big, uh, what, the library was in the bottom and that was study hall. The three and story the three story, mm-hmm. And the grade school I went to had been built across the street, that brick building that was over there. 
that has since been removed. A.D. Glidewell was one. We had two sets of twins in our class, the Morrison twins, and they were identical girls. They're both deceased. Um, there was another set of sister and a brother. I'm trying to think what recall their name. Maxine Record was one of the classmates. I had Martha Weaver for my math teacher, algebra and geometry. And uh, I was so proud of my grade because Martha, I mean, you had to know your math to get your grade. And I made A's and B's under her. And I felt so proud about that. And my family, dads, sisters, and all, are so good in math, so good. At a very young age, they didn't have me doing much of anything because of Eugenia and Martella being the older ones. But I always had to learn how to wash dishes and dry them, but I really wasn't much of a cook. I didn't learn to cook at a young age. Had to keep my bed made and my clothes picked up. But uh, I guess I probably did some dusting sometimes. 1939, Ozark Electric came through. So what was it like before electricity? Coal oil lamps, and then when they came along with the Aladdin lamp, and then what was that other? There was a coal one lamp, and those were better lights. Dad fixed up with a battery and could have one bulb with that battery and could have that light, and he could read and study by that at night. Back in that day also, many people got together and we had prayer meetings in the homes and Bible study. And uh, there was a lot of that that went on. I learned to get down on my knees and pray as a child because that was a big thing in the community with many friends. There were two drug stores, the Sterling and Carmen's. And uh, if you were going to go to the movie, you, got, you could go for 10 cents to the movie. And there was the Mock Clinic, which was really a hospital. And that building is still there. And um, the flower shops. The Crescent, the Southern Mercantile had a grocery store, a hardware store, and a dry goods. They had three sections. And I even worked at the Southern Mercantile for a while. They closed the hardware, they closed the uh, dry goods part because there wasn't much business for that after, with the Crescent and, and uh, people could get into town to Fayetteville and places. Then every Friday in the grocery store, they made chili. So what we would do, we would get a loaf of bread. That's what we ate with the chili was a loaf of bread. And we would go in and have our chili. And oh, it was so good. It was so good. Well, I, I worked through inventory one year, and of course you had to count nails. <laughs> and, all. and the fellows that worked there, to be busy, to be, I didn't like to stand around and sit around. I would clean out under the counters and all, and the fellows said, you're making us look bad, <laughs> don't do all that. <laughs> I said, well, I've got to keep busy. And I had worked in the office for Miss Hill first, and then, but it was interesting to to see the people, meet the people as the, the customers as they came in. Well, I was married then, mm -hmm. so 
I was about 21, I think. Robert Earl and I were married July 25th, 1942. And I lacked one year of school, only I only lacked one semester. So I didn't go the first semester because you did all the fun things in the second semester. That was when you took a trip and you had a picnic. And uh, so I waited and went the second semester and graduated with the class. But the first semester, I cooked for the harvest hands who were busy baling hay and all, and I always made the lunch for them. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravies and hot biscuits, dessert. In school, you had a business class that you were to have an experience in some business, and Father talked to Jim Parks about my working at the telephone company, and that's what I did for my school project. And that was in the old building that was upstairs. Had so much fun with those people that I worked with. Across the street from where the bank is now, the Arvest, it was west and it was upstairs. That upstairs part, they removed that. And someone worked at night and she slept there. And Irene Watson was her name. And uh, she would sleep there in case somebody had an emergency call. And she was there for that. You, you see these pictures where they, yes, but where you punch in the, in the, the slot to answer people, that's what the board was like up there. And the phones, yes, you would ring either one long or in three shorts. And uh, our combination at home was one long and four shorts. That's when it would ring that. That was yours because they were party lines. And uh, so you would answer if it was the right ring for you. Well, he farmed and then he and Jimmy Smith did a tractor business, the Alice Chalmers tractor business in Prairie Grove. Well, I have our Alice Chalmers, our WD-45. That was supposed to be about the best tractor made at the time. And they had customers from all around. And uh, it was an interesting business. And Jimmy also worked on cars in there. It was a combination tractor and car repair and all. 1957, I think that was when they went into business. Robert Earl didn't stay in that too long because there was so much to do on the farm that it was just a little more than what he could handle all the time to have the time to be away from the farm because there was just so much. When you have grapes, you have to prune and tie and spray and so there was more to do on the farm. My father, Maynard Norman, went to, they wanted him to come in when they organized in 1922, but he was already associated with a company out of Little Rock, so he had to make arrangements to get out of that and to go to work for the Washington County Farmers Mutual Fire. And that was 1924 when he went to work there. And um, from an early age, and then, then he became secretary manager. And of course they didn't have offices, they did it in their homes. And mother and I would always help to stuff the envelopes with the assessment that was sent out and put stamps on them. So I started working really at a very early age, probably about 12 or 13 on that. Then when he was ready to retire from that, I was elected to serve as the manager 
of the Fire and Wind Company. Then I retired at the end of 99, and my son, Robert Anthony Tony Cunningham, became secretary manager, and he retired about six years ago, and we didn't have anybody else that was interested in doing it. <laughs> Father's father, Ernest Dorman, did a monument business. And in the cemetery here in Prairie Grove, the old monuments, most of those, he did. And of course, he put them in other cemeteries. People bought them from him for other cemeteries. But he was not good at collecting. So at that time, Dad had gone to Colorado, and that's where he had met Mother. And they were married and lived up there. Dad was managing a lumber yard. Well, Grandfather was going to lose his business. So Mother and Dad, with Eugenia, she was born in Colorado. They came back to Prairie Grove so Dad could save the business, which he did. But a lot of times people paid for their monuments with chickens and eggs and whatever they might have. But grandfather wasn't even good at collecting that. <laughs> so that's why Dad had to come back. And, and his business was in Prairie Grove. And it was about a half, not even a half a block from where the bank is to the west. That's where his business was, where his shop was. Most generally on Sunday afternoons, my parents gathered up clothes. Mother was good at canning and everything because Dad always had such a wonderful garden. And they would take food and go to the people that they felt like needed help. And that's what they did on Sunday afternoons. I knew all, so many of them through the church, you know, the owners of the Crescent, of uh, the uh, drugstore, and uh, had association with them through the church. And we had different meetings of the organizations in the church, and so many of those people were involved. And... Uh, so that's how I really knew and then the time that I spent with most of them. Grateful and thankful to have what we had. But Father did a shower for us in the summertime, an outdoor shower. We had a water tank which would hold, I guess about 500 gallons of water. To, had to have that to put in the sprayer to spray the apples and the oranges, uh, apples and the grapes and the different things. So he would run a hose from that tank over, he did this close to where the outhouse was, and he put up tarps around. So the first one that got in in the summertime to have their shower because the hose was out in the hot sun. You had to be very careful, you could get burned. And then the next one, if the, the second one went pretty soon, maybe their water was gonna be cold. They had to wait a little bit till the sun would warm up the hose again. But that was really a very neat thing to have, a shower in the hot sun summertime outside. Another thing we did, we slept outside a lot. Dad put a shed, attached it to the garage on the west side, and he, it would, uh, was wide enough to accommodate two full-size beds, and that's where we slept. And if it rained, he had tarps that he could drop on either side so we can, would have to go into the house and we wouldn't get wet. But it made it as convenient as he could in the hot weather.